सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली वन मेजर ऑफ हाउ फॉर इफ नॉट how low we've traveled as a nation is the manner in which we respond to tragedies i'm going to take you back to the pulwama massacre that was a terrible terrible tragedy and yet our responses didn't accurately capture the scope and the scale of that tragedy we should have asked who was responsible for the intelligence failure who was responsible for the massive security failures we never really asked those questions and nothing really happened to the people who were responsible they just continued doing what they were always doing instead we busied ourselves with retaliation we knew that pakistan was responsible that's pretty clear and so we had the balakot incident we made some attempt to try and retaliate that's fine Of course you should retaliate if that kind of attack takes place but shouldn't you try and figure out what went wrong why you let it happen we didn't do that because we prefer to attach blame rather than look inward something like that is happening now with the last train accident the one in odisha we should be asking ourselves how did it happen instead there's a great attempt to pulwama is for want of a better term the whole incident if you look at social media you'll find that there are all kinds of theories all kinds of mostly bogus claims made about the accident it's being said that there was a white building near where the accident was and that this was a mosque in fact it wasn't a mosque it was a iskon temple but assume for the purposes of argument that it had been a mosque so what another claim is that the station master was a muslim and that he's now absconding he was actually a hindu and he's not absconding all of these claims are there to build up the narrative that this was not an accident that it was a deliberate hostile act like pulwama it was an act of sabotage all of the stuff on social media that relies on this kind of information to, in several sense of inverted commas is communal in nature the idea is to communalize the incident to suggest that enemies of india no prizes for guessing who they mean are actually behind this accident and therefore it wasn't an accident but was a terrorist strike it's clear why they're doing this they're doing this essentially to make sure that nobody is held accountable you just blame somebody for it and then you forget about it pretty much what we did with pulwama but there's also a counter narrative and that narrative comes from opponents of this government and that narrative is we must have accountability the railway minister must resign okay why should he resign shouldn't he be there supervising the rescue operations making sure the trains run again and after that shouldn't we then be looking at what went wrong no he should resign right away why well the argument goes previous railway ministers have always had the decency to step down look at lal bahadur shastri he resigned after a train accident where are those high moral standards the modi government doesn't have those standards etc etc in fact if you're going to go back into history history and look at historical precedents it's not that simple in 1956 there was a train accident when shastri was the railway minister in which over 100 people died Shastri to his credit offered to resign Jawaharlal Nehru said no he withdrew his resignation this was followed by a second accident in which again over 100 people died Shastri offered his resignation once again and this time it seemed a bit much to say no no withdraw it so Nehru accepted but even when morality was upheld as the people as people will tell you it didn't really do shastri very much damage he went away was hailed as a paragon of virtue as a really moral guy and when nehru died in 1964 guess who took over and became the second prime minister of india the very same lal bahadur shastri 
In fact, there's a tradition in the railways almost where railway ministers resign or threaten to resign or promise to resign after accidents and nothing happens. If you go back to Mother of India, possibly the best railway minister in living memory, there was an accident when he was minister, he resigned. He went and saw Rajiv Gandhi and said, listen, I'm very emotional about this, I have to resign. And Rajiv Gandhi said, this is silly. Ministers are not responsible for every single thing that happens. You've done the right thing by coming to me to resign, but I'm not accepting this resignation. This has been the pattern ever since then. Nitish Kumar in 1999, I think it was, resigned when he was railway minister of an accident. The government accepted his resignation, but like within a year or so, he was back as what? As railway minister. Mamta Banerjee offered to resign when there was a railway accident. Vajpayee refused to accept her resignation. There are so many instances of these resignations being handed in and not being accepted that the claim of some moral authority or some moral imperative, which means that railway ministers always resign, is bogus. When so-called moral resignations take place or are accepted, there's usually politics behind it. VP Singh in 1987 resigned on moral grounds when he was defense minister. The moral ground was as follows. He wanted to stab Rajiv Gandhi in the back and become prime minister. The resignation was step one. And of course, he succeeded. By 1989, he was prime minister. Often it's the people who are accepting the resignation who play politics. When Madhav Rao Sindhya was aviation minister, pilots went on a strike. To try and break the strike and try and provide some services, he wet leased aircraft. One of those wet leased aircraft crashed. There were no fatalities. It wasn't such a huge deal. But because he'd been associated with this policy, he went and saw Narasimha Rao and offered to resign. Narasimha Rao, who'd always thought of Sindhya as a potential rival, was gleeful. He grabbed the resignation, wrenched it out of his hand and accepted it immediately. In any case, even then, Sindhya was back in government in two or three years. So what do these resignations prove? They don't prove very much. It's just a sort of Indian tradition that when something happens, the minister resigns. But it's restricted only to transport ministries. For some reason, it doesn't go on to other ministries. If you look at one of the biggest disasters befell India, it was demonetization. Did anybody resign over demonetization? Did the finance minister resign? Did anybody even ask for his resignation? Was he even aware that demonetization was going to happen? Nobody is sure. There have been screw up after screw up after screw up by Indian ministers. They've not been expected to resign. It's just the railway ministry and perhaps the civil aviation ministry after Sandhya where people are expected to resign. Does this make any sense? Now, the specific complaint, the claim that Ashwini Vaishnav as railway minister should resign is, I think, playing into the hands of this government. My guess is that Vaishnav, who's basically a decent and honorable technocrat, has already offered to resign. And he's been told no by Narendra Modi. He should stay and try and get things back on track. Mr. Modi has no problem accepting resignations of technocrats and people like that. He's not exactly Bridge Bhushan Singh, who has to be protected by the government because he's electorally significant. But I think it suits the government. It suits Mr. Modi to let the demand for Vaishnav's resignation continue. Because as long as liberals go on and on about this, they don't ask the other big questions. What about Mr. Modi himself? He has so closely associated himself with the railway ministry. No new train can leave the platform without his turning up to flag it off. Shouldn't he also be held responsible? But no, he's not being held responsible. It's Vaishnav who's everyone's target. Shouldn't people ask questions about this government and the way in which it works? That such a terrible tragedy was allowed to take place. There are stories about how the safety budget was ignored. I don't know if they're true. But certainly there's an investigation to be done. There are questions to be asked. But no, once again, we're not fixing any accountability in this chorus saying that Vaishnav should resign. But let's assume for the purpose of argument, Vaishnav does resign, which is, I'm not ruling out. What happens? He goes off, he's a technocrat, he spends a year or two doing something, then he comes back into government and life goes on. So let's forget this mindlessness of resignation demands. Let's look at what actually happens. What went wrong at Pulwama? What went wrong in Balasur? Let's try and find out how it happened. Make sure that it never happens again. But of course we won't do that. 
Instead, we'll have lies, we'll have innuendo, we'll have rumors, we'll have suggestions of anti-national involvement in an accident. And on the liberal side, we'll have a mindless chorus doing exactly what Mr. Modi wants liberals to do. It's time to think about this approach. Thank you.